Good evening, parents. I'm Principal McHouston, and I'm coming to you live tonight to talk to you about uh, phase two of our school reopening plan. Um, I know there's a lot of questions. There's definitely a lot of uncertainty as to what uh, phase two brings and the future brings, and I'm hoping I can clarify some things for you this evening so that uh, you can be prepared for the start of school uh, on October 15th. Once again, phase two starts on October 15th, which is the beginning of the second quarter. Uh, our second quarter is, is still part of the semester, just like we did the phase one. We had uh, first quarter, periods zero, one, three, and five. Second quarter, we'll have periods 0, 2, 4, and 6, and um, that will also be a semester long grade. Uh, before I get too far into this, I just want to make sure that the Q&A function of this meeting has been activated and uh, you are able to type in uh, questions. Um, and we will get back to you within the next 24 hours with the answers to those questions. Hopefully, I'll answer most of those questions for you during this presentation. You can also email me at ohsprincipal at orangeusd.org, um, and you can call the office Monday through Friday from 7.30 to 4 o'clock, um, and the number is there on the screen for you. Um, I want to talk about cohorts and how we, when we go into phase two, and how the cohorts work. Uh, first of all, we are doing cohorts um, so that we can separate students into two different groups to limit the number of students on campus. Um, we don't want all 1,700 students on campus at the same time, so we break, we're breaking it into two different groups to try and limit those contacts. Cohorts are assigned by last name, um, and there is no switching cohorts unless uh, there are two students in the same household with different last names that would happen to be in different cohorts. Um, <clears throat> if that's the case, then you would want to contact one of the administrators so that we can make the appropriate change. Um, and cohorts are only for those students that choose to physically attend school. Um, you've been getting phone calls. We had sent out surveys. If you want to come back or you want to stay online, so those of you that decided that you wanted to come back physically, those students will be broken into two cohorts. I'm going to start with cohort A. So cohort A um, are students with the last name, the letters in their last name starting A through L. For example, if your last name is Adams, um, you would be in cohort A. Um, those students that chose to attend school that are in cohort A would be on campus on Monday and Tuesday. They would attend virtual classes Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So the other three days are virtual. Wednesdays are virtual for both cohorts. All students are online on Wednesdays. So let me give you an example of what cohort A would look like. If you notice, for phase two, we have zero periods zero, two, four, and six. On Monday, they would be on campus. They'd be attending zero, two, four, and six. Same thing with Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they're still going to attend zero periods zero, two, four, and six, but it will be at home. Cohort B are for students with the last name starting M through Z. Uh, for example, my last name is McHouston, so I'd be in cohort B. Um, those students attend school on campus Thursday and Friday. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday will be their virtual days, but Thursday and Friday, they would be in person on campus. Here is an example of that cohort B schedule. Cohort B is uh, virtual Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just like I said, and Thursday, Friday on campus, periods 0, 2, 
4, and 6. <clears throat> Students at home, if your student is at home, you will attend virtual classes every day. So you're going to attend 0, 2, 4, and 6, if you have a zero period, every day at home. Uh, you will take a lunch break according to your four periods, period teacher's classroom number. This is where things kind of get a little tricky. So currently, um, everybody has lunch at the same time because uh, we're online, but when we have students on campus, we're breaking our lunches into two different lunch periods. So you have to know when your fourth period teacher is having lunch. Um, and they will post those classroom numbers for some of you guys may not even been on campus before. Some of you freshman parents um, may not know the lay of the land. So those classroom numbers are going to be posted on Google Classroom. So it'll be in the title of their class. Bell schedule, try not to get overwhelmed by this. This one here, this one's a, a little uh, a little busy, if you will. Um, but I'm going to try and you know kind of break it down. Um, remember, this starts October 15th and runs through the end of the quarter, which is December 18th. The zero period is the same time, 7:55 to 8:35, and we have second period normal. Everybody's in second period at the same time. Now, <clears throat> if you look at the orange and gray in the middle of your schedule there, that's all basically fourth period. But within fourth period, we break our lunch group into two different groups. There's group A lunch and there's group B lunch. Once again, we're doing this to limit the number of students in line for food service, nutrition services. We're doing this to limit the students just in, on campus trying to eat and physically distance to keep, maintain safe distances. So it's important that whether you're if you're at home, either 100% online or maybe you your cohort isn't at school that day, you have to know when your lunch period ends or excuse me begins because uh, your teacher will, will not be available during that time because the teacher will be on lunch. So it's broken down by classroom number. Group A lunch students. Um, all the T building, all the T buildings, one through 24, what we have on campus now, and PE and 800. That's group A lunch. Group B lunch for fourth period classrooms is the 100, 200, 300, 500 wing uh, classrooms. Um, and so it looks a little confusing when you look at, you know, group A lunch passing group B, but if you really pay attention or you really look closely, group A lunch. Basically, you're starting your lunch right away. So at 10.05 to 10.40 is your lunch right away. So half of the students go right to lunch break. The other half, half of the students go into their fourth period class. So that class for fourth period that students that are not in lunch starts at 10.15. Um, then that, uh, then the group B lunch will start at the end of their fourth period class, which is 11.35, and they'll have their full 40 minute lunch. Um, and then group A will go into class and they will have their class from 1050 to, to 1210. I know it sounds very confusing, but just know your A group or B group and when your teacher and your class period is at lunch. Um, the same uh, six period office hours, the same situation, uh, 30 minute office hours for our Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday for all teachers except for our uh, CTE teachers. Uh, no office hours on Wednesday and the bottom there tells you what groups A and what group B. And I want to try and break it down a little bit more for you and just look at that um, set of time. Group, these lunch groups are not the same as your cohort groups. Uh, lunch groups are determined by classroom, uh, your fourth period teachers classroom. It's important that you know that te teacher's classroom and I'm going to the next slide. I'm going to show you a little bit as to uh, how to figure that out. Um, this is kind of a repetitive of the same thing. It's kind of really breaks it down for you. Uh, group A starts their lunch period at 10.05. Um, group A logs onto their, their fourth period class at 10.50. Group B starts their fourth period 
at 1015 and group B starts their lunch period at 1135. Once again, that's how we break it down based on classrooms. So let me show you how you are able to figure out what classroom your teacher is in. You may not be familiar with the campus or maybe your teacher moved. I don't believe we had any classroom changes that would um, warrant this, but um, let's just kind of go through this. There's two ways that you could figure this out. Um, the first one can be through the portal, whether it's student portal or parent portal. So on the top of the screen here, you have the example of, um, let's say, Mrs. Kilroy, her uh, fourth period math two class. The classroom is 102 C. Regardless if it has C, B, D or F, it's classroom 102. So if you look at the bottom there, classroom in the 100s is group B. So group B lunch during fourth period. Um, the next one is a snapshot of a Google Classroom that I created. It says Mr. McHouston's phase two classroom in classroom T25. I know group A says classrooms T1 through T24. I just threw T25. That was my old classroom. So I was like, oh, that's a great number. Didn't realize it's out of range. We no longer have T25, but anybody in the T buildings, T1 through T15, T24, T25, um, PE and 800 building, that's group A lunch. I know you're saying, okay, well, lunch is already confusing. How about everything else? Um, I wish I could say it was a lot easier, but um, but we still have a little bit a little bit to get through first. Okay, so um, just want to make sure that you know when your class is going to lunch. I don't want students logging on that are at home and going, oh my gosh, I don't know where my class is at. My teacher's not there. Uh, it's because you just look at the class period or their classroom number and you may know why they're not there. Um, this is where things get a little bit tricky. If that wasn't tricky enough, um, this is where things get a little bit tricky. So um, Orange Unified School District decided to do a gradual rollout with their um, with the start of phase two. The gradual rollout to try and limit um, the number of students on campus and kind of ease us into having kids on campus the first few days. OK, so. If you know October 15th, the start of the second quarter, that is a Thursday. So according to the information I gave you before. Thursday and Friday is for cohort B. So Thursday, October 15th, the day one and day two of your cohorts were gradually bringing. We're not bringing everybody back at the same time. So October 15th, day one of cohort B is going to be ninth and 12th grade students only to physically attend class. So even though you may be a cohort B student, if I'm a 10th grader, I'm still going to be at home. Or day one of cohort B. So these dates are exact dates for you to know how we do our gradual rollout. Friday the 16th is day two of cohort B. Day two is going to be 10th and 11th grade students only. Uh, the only those students will physically attend class. The 9th and 12th grade will go back home. They did one day on campus. They go back home and they get back online to finish their classes or to log into their classes, um, even though it's their cohort day. Not until Thursday, October 22nd, which is one full week from when we started, is day three of cohort B. All grades will physically attend class. Once again, this is only for those students that chose to be on campus. OK, so the third day of cohort B, all students will physically attend uh, from all. I'm sorry, all grades will physically attend. And from that day on, every Thursday, Friday will be a full cohort B of 9th through 12th grade. I know that's I know that's a lot to, to, to consume, but just know that this presentation is going to be posted on our website, Orange High School website, um, and we're going to be here for available for questions um, at any time between now and then. So let's look at cohort A gradual rollout. It's the same concept. The first day of the cohort is only 9th and 12th grade. The second day of the cohort is 10th and 11th grade. Um, to physically attend class. It's not until the third day 
of, co of cohort A, which is Monday, October 26th, that all grades will physically attend class. And from that day on, every Monday and Tuesday, all grades will physically attend class there in cohort A. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know that gets a little confusing, but um, tried to use this to break it down the best we can. Day one, ninth and tenth. Day two, I'm sorry. Day one, ninth and twelfth. Day two, tenth and eleventh. Day three, all grades. Slowly, gradually rolling into our in person class. Once again, this is for only for students that have chosen to attend class. If you are a virtual student and you're staying online, you don't have to worry about this. You just go to class and just know when your lunch period is. OK, that's the most important thing. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the safety precautions and the things that are happening around campus and the work that's been done to prepare for students to return to campus. Um, this slide here has a little as a shot snapshot of a classroom that <clears throat> just shows you the um, student desks and the barriers that are placed on these student desks to help keep students in safe distance. I know you look at it and you think, wow, there's a lot of desks in there. How are we going to put all the students in those desks? Well, each desk is going to have a different sticker and I'm sorry, each desk will have either an orange sticker or no sticker and students, you know, period. The teacher will say, OK, this period you guys are all sitting at a desk with the orange sticker and those are separated so that they can be a safe distance and maximize the space. And then the next period they'll say, OK, well, you are sitting at a desk without an orange sticker and that will also separate students to maximize space. Um, our class sizes will be limited to 20 students. Uh, PE is an exception because they could be outside and spread out, but I still don't see us having a PE class more than 20, but perhaps could be an exception. Um, and then something that is very important. Uh, face uh, covering, a cloth face covering are required for all students. And okay, when I say face cloth, I mean just using a shield um, is not good enough. There has to be a cloth covering that covers your mouth and your nose. Um, and it's required for everybody, not just students, but teachers and staff and custodians and security guards and everybody on campus will need to wear a face covering. Um, and obviously we see all those desk shields. Um, I want to show you that we have hand washing stations. We're going to have six different hand washing stations around campus. Those hand washing stations are so that we can um, limit the number of students inside the bathroom and they can wash their hands at you know any moment outside out in the open. And if they're going from one class to the next, they can wash their hands, make sure their hands are, are clean and move on to the to the you know their next class. Um, wellness checkpoints in the morning when we come in. Um, we are not physically taking temperatures of students, but we are looking for signs of students that uh, signs from students that maybe they are not well. Um, you know, kind of just passively checking as we see kids walking in. A lot of times you can see when a kid's not feeling well, give us an opportunity to have a conversation, ask them how they're doing, how you feeling, and then we can go from there. Um, but um, at all the entrances on campus, which will be off of Walnut by the bus run, the main entrance off of Schaefer, and a new entrance over by the tennis courts through the uh, student parking lot um, will be our main entrances. Once school starts, all the entrances close except for the main entrance uh, off of Schaefer where we have our uh, security station and um, that's where we will be. To, all students will have to enter and visitors actually not having visitors on campus, only essential visitors will be on campus. Um, we'll have to check in through that main uh, check in desk. Um, <clears throat> are your desks and all workspaces are going to be treated and sanitized? Actually, our campus is 100 percent been treated uh, with a special product to help kills uh, bacteria um, and viruses and uh, they will be treated and sanitized and um, we will be cleaning high touch surfaces on a regular basis. Um, we have signage around campus. 
um, to remind people to, to for and students that of safe practices and physical distancing hand sign hand sanitizing stations throughout campus uh, you'll see in multiple areas there are sanitizing stations non no touch sanitizing areas um, and then frequent cleaning of high touch surfaces like i said before uh, once again with the signage we have signage placed around campus um, there's sit here stickers uh, spaced appropriately so that students uh, we've got to remind them not I know they haven't seen each other for so long they're going to want to get together and get close and huddle and you know and and so we have uh, these stickers all over campus to remind students to uh, sit uh, uh, excuse me sit at a safe distance I apologize. Um, so just so you know, these are the different things that are taking place on campus. Once again, these are more. This is more signage here, uh, reminding everybody to wear their face coverings, reminding students to keep and people to keep six feet apart. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention that um, everybody's required to to wear face coverings, like I stated before, um, if a student refuses to wear a mask, um, we would just simply say, you know what, maybe you should be, you know, returned to 100% online for the rest of the semester. Um, coming to campus is your choice. And uh, when you make that choice, we're saying, yes, we're going to adhere to these regulations and um, we are agreeing to wear a face covering and, you know, uh, Students that don't want to wear a mask, we're just going to say, well, you should do school from home. And um, if there's ever a situation, we would ask that student to be picked up by a parent and then change their selection to being 100% online. Very important. Things that our students need to bring once we start back to phase two. Students need to bring their personal or school issued laptop charged please bring a charge we remind them to charge it the night before that fully charged laptop um, they will be using those laptops on campus because you got to remember our teachers are live streaming streaming their instruction but they too will have a face mask they will have a desk guard and the students will have a desk guard so it's best for them to learn from their computer just like they're doing now um, they get to be on campus, but you know, have their computer. Um, they need to bring their charging cords in case their their computer, or their device doesn't last throughout the day. We'll have different charging stations uh, for in the classrooms to charge their device. They need to bring a face covering. Of course, we will have some on campus, but please let's not rely on us providing, you know, 300 face coverings every day. Um, please have your student bring their own face covering. And it's highly recommended that they bring a water bottle. Um, the drinking fountains are not available uh, during this phase two part of our reopening. Uh, so a bottle of water, refillable water would be fantastic. And then if you have them, uh, earbuds or headphones is highly recommended uh, to have those as well to help uh, be able to hear this teacher's lesson from the computer. We will have some of those also, but we don't have enough to give to every student. So uh, if you have them, please bring your own. Um, students must have a laptop or Chromebook, like I stated before, um, with them when they come to campus. Well, I understand not every student checked out a laptop or Chromebook because they might have had something at home. So if you need to get one, you need to check out a device, please start, you know, come to the library, obviously after your class, not during class time, but the library is open for checkout from 7.30 to 3.30. You might be at home and you have a home computer that you can't take with you to school, or maybe it's a shared family computer um, and you need your own personal device. This is a great opportunity for Orange Unified students to go one to one. So every student, almost like your, your math book, every student's gonna have their own laptop. And so if you haven't checked one out, please come to the library and do that. 
Uh, they're open from 7.30 to 3.30 daily, but every student needs a computer, um, even for on-campus learning. Once again, library hours are open from 7.30 to 3.30 every day. Um, students, this is also a great time for students to check out textbooks. So they may only have textbooks for their 0, 1, 3, and 5 classes. Starting October 15th, they're going to need their 2, 4, and 6 class textbooks. So this is a great time to come in and get your textbooks for your next set of classes. Uh, once again, Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 3.30. If you need a hotspot, if you need laptops, if you need graphing, cal graphing calculators, those are still available. Please come and pick one up here on campus. Um, I'd rather not wait till the first day of school and everybody trying to come in and get um, a computer because everybody is going to need one, like I said before. Um, <clears throat> try to check out everything you, you need ahead of time. I want to talk a little bit about, I know there's a lot going on here, but I want to talk a little bit about nutrition services. Um, breakfast and lunch will be served daily on campus. All students, every student will be able to get breakfast and lunch at no cost to the student or parent through the end of the year 2020. Not the end of the school year, but the end of the calendar year 2020. Whether you receive um, lunch here on campus or not, every student will be able, will be fed on campus. Um, you show up, warm body, you get you get your lunch. Um, there will be no a la carte and no vending machines available during phase two. So I highly recommend either students pack lunch um, or come and get the free lunch that the school was going to provide for you. Uh, but no vending machines, um, no a la carte sales in the snack bar at all. Meals to students uh, at home. So if you are staying 100% online, um, you were only allowing you to come pick up food on Wednesdays. Uh, you will get enough for the entire week. Um, but Wednesdays, when there's no students on campus, then you can come pick up your food. Um, Students um, that students and parents will not be permitted on campus to pick up meals while other students are on campus. So if it's not your day, if you're a cohort B and it's a cohort A day, you're not going to be allowed on campus. Um, and for the parents, we're going to just say come on Wednesday to get your meal on Wednesday. <clears throat> a little bit of information about athletics. Um, we are still in phase one of athletics. Um, there are still some very strict restrictions on on athletics and what we can do, um, but students that choose to stay online and stay at home can still participate uh, in on campus practices. You may attend uh, two and four period online at home, but come and have soccer practice at three o'clock. That is OK, right? That's not an issue. Uh, communicate with your coach to find out those practice times. Students are not required to come to practice or excuse me to come to campus for practice. If you do not feel comfortable with the student being on campus, you do not have to physically attend. It doesn't have any bearing on their status on the team. At this time, we don't have we're not having physical practices. These are basically just summer conditioning type practices. Uh, if you are at home and you're doing 100% virtual online, all students that are registered in a six period athletic class must log into their Google Classroom just like every other class. Uh, and their attendance will be taken and there will be virtual virtual assignments assigned to those athletes um, that are not coming on campus. Uh, so it's very important that they continue to log on just like they would any other class um, because there will be some virtual assignments and we will take attendance. Um, this form, I know it's really small from what you're looking at, um, but you can ask your, your athlete if they have received this form. Um, students that are that are on campus attending classes on campus, they may have an athletic practice later in the day. For example, uh, six period is at 12, 15 or so, and they may not have practice till 3 or 3.30. This 
this form would generate a pass for them to be able to leave campus um, and then come back to campus for their practice later on in the day. Um, this is a, your apparent acknowledgement of, yes, I know my son or my daughter is in a six period sport. Um, however, um, I'm giving them the OK to leave campus because they will be practicing later on in the day. Uh, so look out for this form. Some some people have already turned them in. Their coaches should be letting them know that this form is uh, available for them. Um, once again, uh, I want I want to make sure that um, if you have any questions, you still have the question and answer function in this meeting, um, but uh, and we will get back to you within 24 hours. Um, you can also email your questions to me, OHS principal at orangeusd.org. Be happy to answer those questions. I'd be happy to make personal phone calls if need be. Um, you can call the office any day, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, 730 to 4. Um, all in all, I want to make sure that uh, parents feel comfortable uh, asking questions, you feel safe, uh, and you understand that we are doing everything we can right now to make sure we can present a safe environment for your students to return if you so choose. Um, we all miss them tremendously. We're all very hopeful just to get a little bit back to normal. Um, and this is just, I, I want I want to, you know, kind of forewarn parents. This is just um, kind of like just the tip of the iceberg as far as tr our process to getting back to normal. We know this isn't the perfect situation. Um, we know that, you know, coming to class and learning on a computer or maybe even having, you know, the, the shields up is not exactly what we want. Uh, but this is just a way to start transitioning that way. Hopefully we want to keep every student safe. Your safety is at the highest priority for all of us here at Orange High School. Um, we want you to feel comfortable with your decisions. Do not uh, feel pressured in any way. You do what you are comfortable with. If you're comfortable with coming to campus and you want to join a cult, please, by all means, we, we welcome you with open arms. If you just don't feel comfortable right now, that's OK too. And we will do the very best to make sure that teacher provides the best online uh, instruction possible. Please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I, we are all working tirelessly to try and create the very best possible situation for our students and our community. Um, we miss you guys tremendously. We want to know that we are here for you, um, and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thank you for hanging in there. I know there was a lot of confusing things with the lunch and the cohort and the slow rollout, um, but um, I want to make sure we get that information out. Please ask questions. Uh, I hope to see you guys all soon. Thank you.